phasers, turbo lasers, lasers, plasma guns, nukes, railguns, etc., etc. This video will compare the destructive power and the practical application of the most common sci-fi weapons seen on television and movies. I've left out things like death stars, singularity devices, and god forbid time weapons, because when one gets to the point of destroying a planet, a galaxy, or even time itself, there isn't much point of comparing anything. This video is mainly restricted to spaceship based weapons. Before I get started, I'd like to thank my newest Patreon supporters on my modest but faithful Patreon page, J Super Genius and Marlin DeFish, and those who participated or commented on the poll regarding this video on Patreon. I'm looking forward to getting more patrons who can give feedback or vote on polls and give their opinions on works in progress. Also, regarding a lot of feedback on my last video about photon torpedoes, I wasn't sure why they're called photon torpedoes and not antimatter torpedoes since they're antimatter warheads. But matter-antimatter explosions apparently have a lot to do with photons, since photons at varying lengths is what makes up most of the radiation. Now let's get cracking. The first aspect of these sci-fi weapons is their destructive power. For example, the destructive power of the Hiroshima atomic bomb was between 15 and 18 kilotons of TNT. The largest nuke ever detonated was the Sar Bomba at 50 megatons or 5,000 kilotons which was about 277 times more powerful than the first atomic bomb. But the heat energy of these weapons is also a factor. For example, plasma weapons and lasers can inflict very high levels of heat energy, but not a lot of explosive energy. The second aspect of these weapons is the range, or how far a weapon can hit out to. And the final aspect is their accuracy. I'm going to rate the range and accuracy as poor, fair, good, or excellent. Now I've chosen six sci-fi universes for weapons. They're Star Wars, Star Trek, Stargate, Babylon 5, Battlestar Galactica, and The Expanse. There's certainly a lot more sci-fi universes out there, I realize that, but we're sticking to film and television for now, and we're sticking with these since these are probably some of the most popular. I've also chosen to lump The Expanse with Battlestar Galactica since these universes pretty much use the same type of weapons. So keeping these benchmarks in mind, let's get cracking. The first weapons are as simple as you can get. Guns. Or I'd like to call them autocannons. Autocannons in space are actually a lot more practical than you'd like to think, even if they're just propelled with chemical explosives. At short range, a simple rapid firing cannon can track a target, put its projectiles onto a target, and unless the target is heavily armored or shielded, destroy it. The Rosinante uses autocannons quite a bit, and so do the Vipers and Cylon Raiders in Battlestar Galactica. The destructive power of these weapons could probably be easily countered by shields or armor, so its damage rate is fairly minimal. But their accuracy is pretty good. The small size of these weapons and their rapid fire ability would allow them to track and hit fast moving targets. Since these weapons are small, they're not going to have the power to accelerate their projectiles at high speed like something like a railgun. So their effective range is fair, especially since some vessels could probably outrun the bullets. And now railguns. Railguns, Gauss cannons, mass drivers, these are all one and the same. They're all weapons that use electromagnetic coils that accelerate a projectile at very high velocities. So high that when the projectile connects it could vaporize the matter into its own kind of plasma. The destructive power of a railgun shot depends on the size of the projectile but the projectile can be any kind of really heavy metal like tungsten or depleted uranium, and it wouldn't be expensive at all to fire more than one shot. The impact is certainly equivalent to several kilotons of TNT, certainly nothing like a nuke, but certainly surpassing the Moab and other big bombs that we're familiar with on Earth. However, unlike a nuke, these weapons can be fired repeatedly, although their power requirement is high. I would rate their destructive power as fairly close to some of the lowest yield nuclear weapons since they can be fired repeatedly as long as it has a power supply, and they don't have the hassle or side effects of nukes. The effective range of a railgun is about as high as you can get against slow moving or static targets. But with all the coils and all the electromagnetic stuff, these weapons are large. They're not going to be able to accurately track and hit moving targets, especially at close range. Their accuracy is rather poor. And now for nukes. Nukes have a lot of destructive power on land, but on space there isn't an atmosphere and the shock wave is not going to be quite as strong. Most of the power in space is going to be in the heat damage, 
but the radiation and heat damage of a nuke, even in space, is pretty significant, with the most powerful ones in our universe reaching up to 50 petajoules or 50,000 terajoules output. Nukes are going to be fired in missiles most of the time, which means they can potentially be shot down. Nuclear missiles in the expanse seem to have almost unlimited range with their fusion drives, and I'm sure that PSG has some similar drive tech for the missiles. Nuclear blasts have an area of effect that could take out smaller craft such as fighters if they're in range. Nuke damage output is pretty good, their accuracy is not so great, and the range is excellent. And now onto Babylon 5. B5 has some really crazy powerful weapons with tech levels that are almost up to the Star Trek and Star Wars level. The Star Furies, White Stars, and Station Defenses are mostly plasma based. Plasma is a very popular choice in sci-fi. The hottest plasma can fuse hydrogen and ignite stars. We use plasma today to cut through metal like a hot knife through butter. And plasma is actually fairly cohesive in the vacuum of space compared to an atmosphere. So yes, plasma guns are indeed a practical weapon in space sci-fi. Plasma is a superheated, supercharged, ionized gas. Not at the level you see in your plasma TV, but at a much higher charge level. The heat potential could melt through virtually anything. Plasma power is every bit as destructive as a nuke, but it can be spread out upon the target when it hits. The range of a plasma bolt is limited. After all, we're talking about a packet of gas here, which will dissipate over time and lose its charge. The accuracy won't be as good as something like an autocannon, since plasma weapon is going to be a rather bulky device. I'll rate the range of most plasma weapons as poor, and the accuracy is fair. And then there are lasers. Star Trek may scoff at lasers, but there's not a lot of limitation to the sheer amount of energy that you can put into a laser. Already today we have lasers that are in the 10 petajoule range. Remember, nuclear fusion weapons are at about 50 petajoules. A laser can be shot multiple times, unlike a nuclear weapon, and continuously as long as there's power available. Plus a laser emitter, as long as the lenses and mirror tech is sufficient, can be easily directed via small, fast-moving turrets, meaning they're able to track and target even fast-moving targets. The range is also pretty good since there's no atmosphere in space to weaken the laser, but the range is not unlimited. Eventually attenuation will take effect. I could rate the destructive power of the lasers in Babylon 5 on par with lower level nukes or perhaps railguns, but its accuracy is excellent and its range is good. There are other weapons used by more advanced races in B5, such as the Vorlon Death Rays and the Shadow Death Rays, but we don't know anything about what these weapons are. Suffice it to say, they have the power at the higher levels to destroy an entire planet. But let's move on to Stargate. Stargate has some extremely powerful weapons. The most common are the staff cannons used by the Ga'uld on their attacks and fighters. These weapons are plasma-based, and like most plasma-based weapons, they're extremely powerful for thermal damage, but limited in range. I would put these on par with the plasma weapons in Babylon 5 with good destructive power, poor range, and fair accuracy. Most weapons in the Stargate universe are Naquita-based, which is a highly energetic substance, infinitely more powerful or useful than something like our own plutonium. The Asgard use Naquita to power all their tech, and their most common weapon is the Asgard Ion Gun, which is capable of destroying a Hatek with a single shot, shields or no shields. Asgard Ion Guns would be orders of magnitude greater than any nuke we know of, but since these are energy bolts and not a continuous beam, these are unlikely to be particularly accurate. And the range is unknown, but unlikely to be particularly high. I'll read their destructive power is excellent, their accuracy is fair, and their range is unknown. But the Asgard weapons would meet their match in the Ori, who have beam weapons that look something like phasers and can destroy large capital ships such as the Ghoul Hatak in one shot. Although these weapons are certainly very destructive, they seem unable to even track and hit the Odyssey for some reason. I'll rate their accuracy as poor, and their range is unknown. But later, the Asgard devised new plasma beams that can make short work of an Ori ship. It seems that they're moderately accurate, but their range is also unknown. That's all I have time for for this video folks, Star Wars and Star Trek will be covered in the next video, probably coming out before the end of the week. So subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll know when it comes out.
Say in the comments whether you agree or disagree with my conclusions. I'm sure there may be some heated debates there. Feel free to discuss with civility. Also, if you'd like to track the progress of a lot of my projects, head on over to patreon.com slash resurrected and become a patron. At the moment, I'm working on a CG animation of this badass Romulan ship. Say in the comments if you know what this ship is. I plan to do a full animated breakdown of this ship. Thanks for watching, space friends. Until next time.